your brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus, when he taught the people, often spoke to them in parables. He often told stories. And the reason why Jesus did that was because he needed to explain some really terrific things, things, though, that are beyond our comprehension. It's hard for us to comprehend what heaven will be like if we've never been there yet. It's hard for us to truly grasp what God wants us to do unless He paints a picture for us in a way that we can understand. Today we will be looking at one of those parables, a parable about some workers in a field. We find that lesson today in, in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day, long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those who those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Jesus paints this picture of a landowner who needs some people to work in his vineyard. And so he goes out and goes to the normal places to find workers, and he finds people right away, and they make an agreement to what they should be paid. A day's wage is what a denarius would be. And so they go to work. But there's more work to be done. There's more tasks that can be taken care of. So we hear that this owner goes out into the streets to find more people throughout the day. And they all make an agreement on what they should be paid. At the end of the day, everyone is paid exactly what they all agreed to. But it was the people who worked the whole day that had a problem with it. Sure, they agreed to work for only a denarius, but for a day's wage, but why is it that those who didn't even work the whole day get the same amount of pay? The owner reminds the workers, well, it's his money and they didn't have to work. And so he was being fair since it was already under contract. We can understand maybe the feelings of the people who worked all day, who, who doesn't feel like they're owed a little bit more if they do most of the work. How often do you, look, you might look down on someone and say, well, I did all the work, I should be getting most of the recognition. So we can understand the feeling and we can understand what this picture looks like. So what point is Jesus trying to make? What is he trying to teach us as he says about the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says that at the end, those who are first will be last, and those who are last first. In other words, I'm going to treat everyone equal. In the kingdom of heaven, it doesn't matter when you enter that kingdom of heaven. It doesn't matter when you become a believer in God's kingdom. 
you will receive the same heaven, the same benefits, the same love, the same care from God. It doesn't matter if you were baptized as a Christian and grew up your entire life going to church and Sunday school. It doesn't matter if you were, if you come to faith at the last second of your life. God is going to treat you the same. How is that good news? Maybe it doesn't feel like good news. Maybe it feels like a ripoff. You mean I bore the burden of being a Christian? I took on persecution. I took on all the hardships of life. I followed you everywhere. I had to say no to my friends. Meanwhile, someone who lived a life full of sin, full of what, with no consequences in their thoughts, at least from you, gets to have the same heaven as I do. But that is the good news, isn't it? Because first of all, who has even earned that heaven? Who has earned God's love? Not a single one of us. And those who haven't been in God's graces, they're missing out. For we are truly filled and loved and cared for. We have real peace and joy. Those who know who their Savior is and those who don't do not have the same joy and peace that we do. Peace that is everlasting. And so really, if you really think about it, being a Christian all your life really is the way to go. It is the one that leaves you with the less stress and the most joy. But how great is it that God will treat us all the same? That God will give us all the same heaven? That once we are His, we, it is as if we had always been His. In the end, it's just pure grace that any of us believe in Jesus. It's pure grace that any of us can say that we're going to heaven. And how God wants to use His heaven, His blessings, well, that's up to Him. And we, well, let's just be thankful. Thankful that we are included in that message, included in His blessings. Because in the end, none of us deserve to go to heaven. But because of God and His love, we get to go. We get to be with Him. We get all the blessings, the blessings that He won when He paid for our sins on the cross. And so, let's just be thankful that He has saved any one of us at all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes I might get jealous of those who, who didn't have to be a follower of You all their lives, but Lord, how beautiful it is to even say that I am a follower of you. For this is not done by my own works. It is only by you. You have made me your child. And I thank you. By your grace and mercy, I know heaven is my home. And I couldn't have it without you. May you lead me to always be grateful for what you have given to me. Grateful for the peace and joy that I have today. Grateful for the future that I know will be mine, the one that you have given me and all your people, an eternal life with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless your day.